All right, guys. So you welcome to the live trading um, workshop organized by Ten Trade. This is um, a community webinar that we do for all Ten Trade clients, and then we analyze the market as a trading community to spot profitable trading opportunities in the market. And we do this every week, Mondays and Wednesdays every week, uh, to give you extra confirmation as to the place that you are looking to trade. Also, it's an avenue to get clarity about some concepts that you like to know as a trader. So if you have questions, you need clarifications, these weekly sessions is the best time to, you know, ask those questions and then we will do our best to deliver um, the right answers to you, okay? So also very importantly, uh, we are less pairs together. So if you let's just start dropping the currency pairs that you're looking at trading for the week and let us analyze those pairs together. Okay. It makes sense to have um a different perspective as to the setup that you are trading. So you can, you know, weigh both analysis and choose the right one. So what pairs are you looking at trading for the week? Kindly type it in a chat box and then we analyze them together all right so the year is actually starting great um trade wise starting great all right so we are we are here for you guys so kindly type in the currency pair if you want us to analyze or if you have any questions you want to ask they can just signify and then we, uh, and then I unmute you to ask a question. Okay, so GBP USD, the first one by Kelly Chi, right? Okay, so we'll do GBP first, and then we'll do Euro USD. All right. Okay, so let me just delete my analysis and do this. Okay, so. As always, it makes sense to start from, you know, the weekly perspective. The major reason why you're starting from the weekly perspective is to get the, the bed's eye view as to what the chart is, the story that is in play. You always want to be on the side of the volume. So when you start from a higher time frame, even though you will not necessarily take entry from the higher time frame, but it makes sense to to start there okay top down analysis very 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 important so <clears throat> when we look at gbp usd on the weekly chart okay with on the weekly chart if we look at the market structure the price is still very much it's still largely uh, a downtrend even though this is the structure right now and then what we have right now is a, you know, retracement, right? Or a pullback. So price is still very much reacting to uh, this supply cluster here. So let me draw that appropriately. This is where price is reacting to right now. There's a range of supply here. This uh, liquidity that was grabbed here, okay? This supply range right now. So price is in the supply range over here. And this is the weekly time frame. All right. So what can we see happening here? When price, so the way that I would like to interpret this is very, very simple. Okay. So price did this. We saw this retracement here and a pullback. Currently, possibly this pullback right now has already taken out this liquidity because we've seen activity of sellers here, right? So this move right now has taken out liquidity, right? So, and ultimately price is in a supply, price in a supply on the weekly chart. And what do we do when we um, identify a supply zone? we look for sell opportunities, okay? Ideally, in a supply zone, you want to be looking for sell opportunities, not 
you can also spot buy setups but it's, it's more convenient to trade sell setups right so that's what we're focusing on here on gpusd so price the the supply are, are the ones in control right now the sellers are in control right now so we want to go to lower time frame and find a possible setup so here's what I, 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 I like to do when I'm analyzing on my own personal chart and I spot a, a zone on the weekly chart. I like to go um, some time frames deeper. So from the weekly chart, I usually love to jump to the four hour chart. So I'm going to jump to the four hour chart now and show you something that personally I'm also waiting for. Now on the four hours, what can we see now i want you to take note of the activity in this zone here this zone that this rectangle is it gold or yellow now right check out what's going on here price has been grabbing liquidity you can see this m pattern forming right taking out sellers right we have multiple uh what's it called and so taking out sellers Eventually, price is forming another possible M pattern here. So this is a structure that price is forming right now. <clears throat> okay, so let me draw that out. So we have this structure here, all right? So we have the other flow is right here. It was bullish, like so, okay? This high is a bit higher than the previous high. And this other flow shifts from bullish to bearish. Was initiated here. This higher low was broken. Okay. So when we are looking, when we see something like this, a lot of times, right, price will usually retrace into this range here. All right. To this range here so personally on gbp usd if we are looking to sell right it makes sense to wait for price to retrace into this zone all right so this is my recommendation and this is what i'm doing personally i recommend that you set your alert here so over here at um at one one point, let's say 1.23518, okay? So you, you wanna search your alerts there and wait for price to enter that zone here. So when price gets a bit more momentum and content into this zone, you want to look for sales in this zone, all right? And then, uh, except except you are you are a swing trader, you can just go ahead and take your entry. If um, you like to hold trade for long, what you can do is to set a sell limit from here, put your stop loss a bit above the zone, and then at least you want, you're going to target this low, All right? So that's a that's a one to four point five risk reward if you are swing trading. Right. But for intraday traders, what you want to do is to get an extra confirmation. If indeed, when price gets into the zone, right, there'll be uh, enough supply to push price down. So what you want to do is very, very simple, right? And this is what I recommend. What should wait for, for intraday traders? When price gets into this uh, block of supply here, as soon as it touches this first zone, right? At that mitigation, you want to, let me delete this. You want to go to a lower time frame, like your 15 minutes. So I, I uh, recommend 15 minutes or five minutes, the least. So you are looking for liquidity. Uh, you are also looking for liquidation here. So when price gets here, let's say on your 15 minutes or something like this, you want to see some sort of an end pattern, okay? And then you want price 
to take out that pattern. So that's liquidity that needs to be grabbed. A lot of times when price gets to a supply zone or a demand zone, there will always, always be a liquidity grab. That is a footprint of the big, of the big banks and financial institutions, right? So you want to see price go back up and take out liquidity, okay? So it has taken out this sell side liquidity here. So over here, based on your strategy, your entry strategy, you can now start looking for entries. Okay, so if you are somebody that is into heads and shoulders, or you are into end pattern, or you are into whatever, or you are into purely resistance and support, okay, with, with, your, with your moving average and the likes, you can take your entry here, right? Your strike rates will greatly increase because you have waited for liquidity to be grabbed first, all right? So above this zone, when liquidity is being grabbed, is my recommendation to start looking for sales, all right? So that's what I would do. Or oh, that's what personally I'm waiting for on GBP USD, and I think it's always going to happen, right? So, uh, Mr. Mr. What the, Mr. Kilechi and Solomon, this is what I will wait for for GU, or this is my recommendation on what you wait for on GU. Okay, but alternatively, what can also happen here is very very simple. Now, if if price is going to still come up, still go up into the zone, right? There might be some bullish move on this four hour chart. So if for any reason in this zone, you see some sort of an uptrend like so, so if price should do this, so possibly there might be a retracement on this. So if price should retrace, Again, like so, you want to wait for price to react in a demand zone, and then you buy you buy the move into this supply. Oops, it's getting a lot messy. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so GBP USDC has a long way to go. Nothing really solid yet to trade on GU. I wouldn't recommend you to enter for a buy or a sell yet. It's very, very dangerous right now, okay? You don't want to be the liquidity that will be grabbed, okay? Good. So let's check out Euro USD. That's the next trade. Euro USD. Right, so as always, let's start from Higher time frame. This is the weekly chart. So we see how something quite similar to quite similar to Euro USD. Okay. So let us check out DXY. We haven't checked out DXY in a while. DXY is the dollar index. Let's check out how the dollar is doing. Okay. Is the dollar strong or weak? Now, as you have noticed, you know, we are seeing a very, very similar structure on most USD pairs that has the USD as, as a quote, and of course the dollar index as well. So right now on the weekly charts, what's happening on the DXY, okay? So let us mark out the structure. Price is doing this. Okay, so right now on the DXY prices, there is there is weakness, okay, on the dollar. That's why the dollar is, you know, trending up on Euro, USD and the likes, right? But ultimately, if, if we are to consider market structure based on weekly, we are just in a phase when it comes to the dollar, right? The phase is a phase of retracement. All right, so price is still currently retracing. Price is still in a demand zone, right? So possibly what is happening here on the index is a possible, you know, accumulation, okay? So 
a lot of liquidity needs to be accumulated in order for price for it to gain strength. Now, because this is a weekly time frame, you know, things can be slow and weekly, right? So ideally in the next few weeks, the dollar should bounce back, okay? If price is still, if price does not break this zone, this demand zone, if price does not break this demand zone, right, the dollar should, should bounce back eventually, all right? But we should start getting worried if um, the dollar goes beyond, the index goes beyond the zone, all right? So, but ultimately, there will still be that reversal that we need, okay? But we are not in any threats of, um, of a downtrend yet on the index based on the weekly anyways. So let us go back into the Euro USD and see what's going on, right? Again, similar structure as we have on the index. Let us mark out our demand and supply zones here. What we have, so price right now is currently reacting to this range of supply here. All right. So the dollar is still in this zone, right? It's in a supply zone. So actively, ideally we are looking for sales, but like I always say, even in a supply zone, you can see a buy opportunity because supply zones can be broken. So we are in this zone. So we are incentivized to look for sales for now. So let's go to a lower time frame, like the four hour chart. And on the four hour charts, what are we looking for? Now we've seen a lot of uh, liquidation here. You can see this end pattern taking out, okay? End pattern, heads and shoulders taking out, okay? We have seen highs taking out. So price is currently liquidating here. So you see multiple liquidation on on four hour time frame. Okay. So possibly if if price will remain in this zone, if price will remain in this zone, we should see um, a possible order flow shift. If price will drop in this zone for a sell, okay. If price will drop for a sell what we should be expecting on Euro USD in terms of structure is a standard order flow shift, something like this. You might see a retracement like this, price coming as high as this. And what you wanna wait for is the order flow to shift from this bullish to bearish. So you want this higher low to be taken out like so. So you wait for price to retrace over here to break this zone rather, and then you wait for a retracement, and then you wait for a retracement into a supply. So that's where you look for sell opportunities, okay? So the other scenario that can happen is if this supply zone does not get respected, give me a second, So if this supply zone does not get respected, what can happen is very, very simple. We we'll just start looking for possible sell, possible buy scenarios on Euro USD. In that case, you're looking for a pro-trend structure like so. If I should break out of this zone, you wait for the retracement, okay? And then let a standard uptrend form. Once that happens, we for the retracement into a, into a block of demand, and then you are good, okay? So like I always say, uh, we want to be very, very flexible as regards analysis. You want to be prepared for possible outcomes. So you want to know what, what will happen for a sell to run and then what will happen for a buy to run okay so these are the two possible um scenarios that we should expect on euro usd 
Okay. But um, because I think this period, I'm seeing a lot of similarities uh, or let's say correlation uh, between the euro dollar and the GBP dollar. So if, um, let's say for example, so check out what we are waiting for on, on GBP USD, for example, we are waiting for price to still come up here a bit. So price needs to still move another, <clears throat> another let's say 150 pips. This is small movement for um, GBP. This can happen in a few days. So we may also be looking for a bit more up push on up push on the dollar as well. So price might actually break this zone. Okay. But who knows what's going to happen on Euro USD? So, but let's just don't let us overthink it. Uh, let's just act according to what price is giving us. But for Euro USD, these are the two scenarios that you know I think we should wait for. Okay, Manu is asking. So you don't think the dollar index sentiment will affect what happens to what dollar will occur? Yes. So that's what I'm saying. You know, I said that um, on the weekly, ultimately on the dollar index, ultimately price is still in an uptrend on the weekly. What is going on right now is a retracement. <clears throat> okay, maybe we should go back to the index. So I'm checking the index on the on the weekly time frame. On the weekly. So here's what I said about the index. So ultimately, I based, based, based on structure, I feel well, price is just in a retracement, it's still in an uptrend, right? So it is until price breaks this bottom here that I'll start considering total weakness of the dollar. So if price is here in a demand level, okay, that means the dollar might possibly pick up. So that means the dollar, the strength on the dollar is incoming. So in that case, for pairs like Euro USD, GBP USD, we should be possibly also expecting a sell on those pairs. I don't know if that makes sense, Emmanuel. Okay, so that's my sentiment using the um, DXY, okay? So, so Euro USD. Let's let's see what's going to play out in the next few next few days from now. So, on on these pairs, we should really know exactly what price will do from Wednesday, okay? Because real real reversals happen on Wednesdays from Wednesdays most of the time. So midweek. So by by tomorrow. We, we start getting some form of um, clarity as to what's going on in the market. So thankfully we should have another session on Wednesday and we will, and I'll always give more context as to you know what we should do based on what price is doing. Okay. So let's check out the next pair. Somebody sent AED USD, right? AED USD and gold. So let's check out AD USD. AD USD. So let's go to the weekly. So similar structure on weekly as well. Price is reacting to this supply over here. And in this zone, we should be, since it is supply, the ideal direction that we should be looking for to trading on a lower time frame is a sell. So let's go to the four hour chart. But before I sell on the four hour charts, I need to see activity of liquidity grabs happening. Okay. And then we've seen all of that here. 
we've seen um, patterns here, price ultimately taking it out. Okay, then price selling for a bit, another um, pattern from here, price to call liquidity and um, formed. Okay, so we are, we are seeing moves happening. Ultimately, we've seen multiple liquidity grabs here. All right, so we want to wait for another possible another possible entry on this guy. So this is AUD USD on the four hour chart. Okay, so what you're gonna look forward to right now is your entry criteria. So based on your entry model, you are, you are in a good zone to look for sell opportunities. So if you see an end pattern from here, okay, it's a good entry that you can make because obviously you've seen multiple reversal pattern from here, okay? This is an end pattern that formed. This is another end pattern, okay? It's an end pattern, right? So, and these are forming after liquidity. So if it gets to form again, if you're someone that trades reversal pattern like, you know, uh, double tops and double bottoms, Right, be very, very confident in taking entry, right? So, or if you're someone that is into smart money, order flow, what you want to wait for is very, very simple, wait for something like this, okay? You want the order flow to shift from bearish, from bullish to bearish, okay? Something like this, you wait for the retracement and then you look for sell opportunities at the supply, all right? Obviously, your your entry will be on a lower time frame, right? Hold on, guys. Okay, so that is one possible scenario. So right here on the four hours, we have market structure setting up. We don't know exactly what price wants to do. So we'll let, we'll let market do its thing um between today and tomorrow so that wednesday we start looking for solid entries okay so another thing that you that you can wait for if um if the sell does not work we can see a buy opportunity we can see this uh market structure like so you can see a bullish move like so okay so this range, this demand range, okay? I'll favor you to wait for price to get to the middle, okay? Over here, if price should be tracing to the zone, you can start looking for buy, for buy opportunity because price is in a, is in a pro-trend, uptrend on the four hours, okay? Good, because, why are we why are we also looking for buys? Because we still have um because this is a supply range. Price can come all the way to the extreme before before dropping totally. Right. But it doesn't mean that because we are in a supply zone, we should totally neglect um trade setups that is right in front of us. Okay. So if a sell happens here. It might be the sell move that will totally, uh, you know, break this demand or not. So if the sell happens and it traces into this demand, if the demand for this particular currency is higher than the, than the supply, that means we are going to have to see another higher high. Okay, so it depends on uh, what, what the sellers and buyers want to do at the end of the day. Someone's asking, how many trades do you typically take in a week? Well, uh, that's that's a question of the trader as an individual. It depends on the the pairs that you trade and the time frames that you trade on. I would say, uh, I would say, don't over trade, okay. And also recommend a maximum of let's say three three to five trades a week, if you see up to that a week. All right. I don't, personally, I take, um, 
I'd say between two and three trades in a week. Okay. Because of the way I trade, uh, I like to wait for perfect setups and entries. So I don't trade so much. All right. So for, yeah. So two possible scenarios on AUD USD is either you wait for price retrace into this demand and you look for buy over here or you wait for uh, a reversal pattern to form over here. So this is four hours. I, I, I recommend let the pattern form on four hours. Okay, if you go and look for a reversal pattern on lower time frame, it might be a bit too risky for you, All right? So let it form on a higher time frame like four hours and then you look for entries to sell, okay? Likewise, if you are going for the buy, let price retrace into this demand and then look for buy opportunities. Make sense? Good. So that's AED, USD. Let's check out gold real quick. So gold, let's go to the weekly chart on gold. Okay. So gold on weekly. What do we see on weekly here? Let's mark out the market structure on gold, right? Price doing this ultimately. Okay. And what do we have here? Price is currently reacting to this supply. All right, so prior to the weekly supply on gold here. Okay, so over here, what we can start doing is if this supply is gonna hold, we can look for sell opportunities on lower time frame, or we look for buy opportunities for the continuation up on the lower time frame. So if you go to the four hour time frame, what do we see on the four hours here? Okay. So over here, if price is going to sell, if price will sell based on market structure right now, the the most visible the most visible structure is still the uptrend on four hours price is still very much bullish on four hours so we can wait for price to retrace into this demand okay so wait for the retracement and then over here you can look for bad opportunities but there's a warning as regards trading demand and supply. Like I always tell you, now you are not the only person that knows that this is a demand level. So a lot of people, re, uh, retail traders, smart money, people are actively, will also be trying to buy when price gets into this level. That is why as a trader that wants to be profitable most of the time, you need to consider liquidity always before you take entry. So when price or if price, if price should we trace into this zone, on a lower time frame like your 15 minutes, you always want to see liquidity taken out. What do I mean by that? You, you want to see activity of people buying here first. So, and the easiest way to spot it is to look for double bottoms. When you see a double bottom happen like this, this is a signal that people are started buying. But you don't want to buy at the same time that other people are buying. So you want to wait for people's stop losses to be taken out. So wait for price to take out liquidity, All right? Once that happens like so, over here, if you, see a, if you see a very good buy setup, you most likely bank a few pips, if not major pips. 
but your strike rate is going to improve, okay? That is if this demand zone is going to hold ultimately, okay? So there's a first setup scenario here. So if this demand zone is a real, is a real demand zone, then we should, we should find a higher high. It should print a higher high. So if you are buying from here, it makes sense to, you know, at least have a target over here to also grab liquidity here, okay? So, but another scenario that can happen is a possible um, shift. So this zone can be a flip zone. Let me delete everything. So the second scenario that, that can happen on this is very, very simple. So we have something like this. So Prime might retrace into this demand zone now, and then the demand zone can act, can respond a bit like so, okay? But ultimately, the demand zone can fail. So price can break below this demand zone to form a low. When, that hap when or if that happens, you want to wait for price to retrace, okay? Into the supply that broke the demand. So either this one, this supply, or this extreme supply is going to hold. So you want to take sell, sell setups in this zone or in this zone. And then you sell. All right, so that's what, that's what I you know have on gold. Uh, personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch gold right now because it's in a very sensitive area. But if you are someone that is into risk, if you are an aggressive person, right? Because ultimately, order flow um, expectation price has formed. Price has given us an impulsive move, like so. And usually, after an impulsive move, you should see. A retracement and then we've seen a demand zone here so if your zone that is aggressive what you can do is just just sell right away and you want to put your stop loss above the zone now so this is just based on speculation no real no real entry strategy with this okay so you want to take entry now put your stop loss above the zone okay let us confirm by going lower to let's say 30 minutes and see if you can take it because this is a counter trend move and it's always risky to take entry or counter trend. So what do we have? So possibly what you want to do is very simple. If, if you short this, if you short gold over here, okay, you want price to at least retrace a bit. So we should expect a retracement into this zone and then you want to look for sales, possible sales. All right, again, you want, you, want, you want to be very, very careful. This is a counter trend move. You are, you are selling against the trend, against the trend. Hope that makes sense. So that's what um, we will do on gold, okay? So which other pair are we, are we looking at? GBP, AED. All right, GBP, AED. GBP, AED. <clears throat> yes, you can ask, yes, you can, Emmanuel. Do you want to be unmuted? So you ask your question. Okay. So unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, okay. thank you. Okay, okay. I'll, uh, I'll try it. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so I was actually waiting for this. So if we are looking to buy or looking to go bullish, on gold okay so why why are we then looking to sell on other most usdps because i would expect that 
Dollar index also should affect gold. Okay. I, I totally agree with all of the other uh, analysis, right? And right. the fact that you have actually given how solid that might turn out, either we eventually go bearish or go bullish still, but waiting on the confirmation, unless if one is actually swinging, and you have to determine which of the side are you swinging to, yeah. depending when the value confirmation you are looking for now turn out. But you see, because of this gold ordinarily, that is actually one of the reasons why I am actually, because if we are looking at, and you even warned here, yeah, that you will not even agree that one should take a long shot on gold here, yeah, because it will mean you are actually selling against the trend. Right. And I would expect that this sentiment also, if we base it on the dollar index, will also affect all that the uh, dollar related uh, uh, instruments. Yes. Yeah, so this this is it, right? Now here is the perspective that I think you should have when using the index. The index okay. should just give you an idea about okay. possible direction. Okay. The the index work, but like I said, it's not. It's just um, look at index as a confluence, not the major uh, thing that will predict the direction because there are multiple times that dollar index will be purely bullish. The dollar is strong, but eventually on other pairs, like the dollar is weak a lot of times, right? So yeah, my recommendation is that's that's why I usually give um, possible scenarios that can happen. Trade what is in front of you, okay? okay. And and then we have we are we are trading the market structure as it is printing, as it relates with every other um, currency. <clears throat> All right. So based on market structure, if you are on the side of market structure, if market structure says that price is in the supply, it's best to look for sales. If market structure says our price is in a demand, it's best to look for demand. It's best to look for buys, rather. All right. So um, I know the argument between the dollar index and gold is very, very valid. But I recommend, again, trade was in front of you. Okay. And okay. That, that, that's why I always recommend to traders that we should be as flexible as possible. All right. There are times that these things, you know, I'm sure you are aware of the manipulation that's going on, right? We are not the first person mm -hmm. to, to use index. Index has been around for a while. You know, who, who even measures index? How is it measured? <laughs> huh? I guess. It yeah, so there's a lot going on <laughs> on the um, back end. So the best that we can do as retail traders, let's trade what, what is in front of us. If you have a good strategy and you apply market structure to your strategy, you apply liquidity concept to your strategy, regardless of what the index is saying, you will have a very, very good strike rate. Even though you will not win all of your trades, but you are going to win more trades than you are losing, right? I, I, I've been saying this since uh, last year, the game changer for a lot of people that are trading is when they start applying liquidity concepts to their trading. Regardless of if they are trading support or, or Fibonacci or they are trading geometry, they are trading harmonics, understand liquidity because it's a concept that drives the market, supply and demand. Buying and selling happens um, simultaneously all right if you go to so let me give a practical analogy to explain that again if you go the the market participants that we have that majorly move to market are the bfis so if they want to buy if there's an uptrend on let's say euro usd now okay and then price is going up it's not our money as retail traders that is actually moving price it is those other people that have large capital. So that means they are actually buying. So let's say gold, for example, okay? 
so if gold wants to go up now, that means those big boys are buying gold. Then you must ask yourself, who, where is this gold that they are buying? Who are they buying gold from? That means they are buying from people that are willing to sell. All right? They are, they are, they are buying from people that are willing to sell. And a lot of times, market makers or the BFIs, they will create scenarios in order to have people sell unwillingly or willingly because your stop loss in this case is a sell order. So if people see, let's say, a W pattern or like a head and shoulder here and then they buy somewhere, they, they know for a fact that your stop loss will be in a zone here. So what they usually do is to sell to buy. So they push price beyond your stop loss, okay, to, to buy because you are willing to sell. Your stop loss is a sell order. So they move the price down to buy from you at your price. You are going to set the price. So they buy from people willing to sell based on their stop loss. So that's what eventually moves the market. All right. So regardless of what the index is saying, if we just follow normal basic economics, if you apply it to your trading, the market will become a bit more clear to you. You'll be able to interpret what's going on uh, a whole lot better. Hope that makes sense. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, is that clear? It's not there. Okay. Okwemi, I'm going to, Okwemi, you can unmute yourself now and ask your question. Uh, good evening, everyone. Hey, good evening. Hello. Good evening, sir. We can hear you. Thank you. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to join the team. And early speaking, I've been joining the lecture so far. Please, I'm still a new bit in the system. But I got to know about this template and I use the risk for my trading. So on the risk, I'm used to trading all this home and trash. So I don't know okay. this issue of uh, liquidity and of that like that. I don't know how far or how someone can do about it. Because I've noticed so far about the woman crash is that well, especially I trade on cash 300, which is very, very volatile. So if the trend is an up trend, one of a sudden just bring all this mighty size before you know it is moving a down trend. And all this issue of fake breakout and the like. So I've been finding it difficult to determine whether the breakout is the real breakout or the fake breakout. So I don't know if you can shed a little light on that on how to shed it more. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Okwemi. Awesome. So um Tentrade is a, a multi-asset broker. Uh, we don't deal with um synthetic, right? You know, boom and crash VIX, they are synthetic indices. And what is synthetic? It means something that is not real. It's like a programmed version of the real market. So people trading VIX, boom and crash. It's not actually the live market. It's not a real market. It's, it's a program, right? So, but Tentrade does not offer synthetic. Tentrade offers trading in real market scenario. So we offer you uh, trading in the currency market, stock market, and also the cryptocurrency market and other real, real life indices, okay? But uh, market structure is still the same across board, but I'll recommend that you... That you trade with 10 trade, trade the real market because what we are teaching you will most likely be more aligned towards a real market rather than a synthetic market. All right. But as you join our sessions every week, of course, this is your first time, you get to know exactly what we're doing. Uh, we usually also run beginners classes every week for example we're going to be having one um, from next week so next week we have a four-day uh, beginners class okay where we'll run through majority of these concepts so I, I i recommend that you look forward to the announcement about the boot camp and then we'll teach you 
most of these concepts. And of course, take time to also join our sessions every Mondays and Wednesday in order to learn them. Okay, so it's a journey, Mr. Akwemi. Uh, so I like that you like what is going on, but I require that you keep joining the sessions so that you can actually um, learn and understand it a lot, a whole lot better. Yes, boom and crash is a man-made asset. Yes, it's not it's not real market. Yes, Mr. Aziz Jima, um, somebody will, will reach out to you and then you can join our beginners boot camp next week and you learn how to trade from scratch. Okay, is that clear? Mr. Apoemi, hope I answered your question. I'm not sure I did, but uh, I recommend that you join our beginners sessions so, so that you learn. Also keep joining these weekly sessions, Mondays and Wednesday, you, you will learn and know exactly how to apply everything, even to your boomer crash, if um, you choose to remain with the boomer crash, okay? So let us go back to our chat. We're supposed to check out GBPA AUD, if I'm not mistaken, GBPA AUD. Okay, so. What are we looking at? The first thing you, you, you want to do when looking at a pair is the market structure. Before you start trying to figure out how your strategy is going to align, you want to know exactly the order flow market structure. Okay. And one thing that you will learn when you join the, the uh, beginner session is to learn market structure, right? Because most people, that are trading now, don't even understand market structure, right? Most people don't even know what market structure is. You don't know how price moves from weak hands to strong hands. You don't know how price moves, how the order flow shifts from bullish to bearish. Okay, so these are basic concepts that you need to nail in order to be able to follow exactly what the candlestick is telling you, all right? So um, don't be too, uh, so, you know, for for majority of people that have been trading for several months or even years, maybe it is that lesson on market structure that will just change the whole game for you. So I, I recommend, even if you have been trading, you know, devote some time to the bootcamp session as well and just refresh your knowledge on basic concepts because foundations is very, very important. Even the Bible says, if the, if, the, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the retros do, right? So I, I employ you, employ you to uh, register for the session. So GBPAUD, what's going on on the weekly chat over here? So let us check this out. Let me, let me go to the monthly on this and check out something. So this is GBPAUD. What do we have here? Okay. So if I'm checking out this, like so, I would say price is giving me, this is string structure on the weekly, like so, All right? We have this as a break of structure here. Um, price is currently retracing. The supplies have it on the weekly. All right. So on the weekly, let's go to daily. Good. So on daily, we also have a, con a confirmation of that um, supply on weekly. Okay, what do we have in that weekly supply? We can see this mitigation here, an M pattern forming. Okay, and ultimately price coming up to take our liquidity. Guys, it happens every time, every time. I don't lie to you, every time. So, and ultimately when that liquidity grab happened, you can see whatever this is, maybe an end pattern forming, price dropping. So on GBP AED, 
on weekly, we have the sellers are active on weekly. Also on daily, we have active sellers on daily. Okay, so what we can start doing is to possibly wait for price to retrace. So I recommend that this is daily chart. This is a supply zone. If price should do this, we trace over here, we look for sales. Okay, so that also coincide with the Fibonacci value that is a premium, okay? So this is a long-term trade. So if you are waiting for price to retrace here, okay? Now, on the flip side, we can also see activity of, of, of buyers demand ultimately so if you are looking at price from this perspective right we are price doing this okay and right now price is also in an extreme demand so a scenario that can happen is a possible scenario now we've seen price retrace into a demand we can have price shoot up here to create a higher high Right, good. So over here, over here, we can look for activity of buyers. So let's go to the lower time frame and see if we've seen liquidation and let's see if there's a buy set up here. So at the retracement, at the retracement, what can we see? I can see a W pattern like so. All right, so what you want to do is for wait for price to retrace below this zone. Okay. So personally, if I will buy GBP AUD, I like to see this low taken out properly. So I still think that price is going to come down on GBP AUD. Okay. If it's going to buy, price will come back down here and form possible buy scenario here. So that's that's that might take on GBPAUD because I'm considering uh, liquidity first. All right. So let's check out the next pair. USDJPY, UJ. USD JPY. Let's go to the, to the weekly chart. So what's going on on UJ? Over here, we have price going up like this, like so. And ultimately, we are seeing a retracement. All right. Price is retracing. And right now, where price is, price is reacting to this demand here, this range. Okay. So we've seen liquidity taken out, like so. So we can look for buy setups on UJ. Now, we are also aware about the strength of the dollar. Dollar is not that strong. So looking for buys might be a bit of a heckling tax for, for um, UJ. Let's go to lower time frame, like four hours. So on H4, what is the structure on H4? If we are going to look for buys on H4, that means the market structure needs to shift from bearish to bullish. Right now, what do we have on H4? We have an impulse correction, impulse correction, impulse. So right now on H4, price is still very much 
you know, ultimately bearish. Price is respecting uh, the supply. So we have this. Oops, sorry. So we have this retracement into this zone. And then possibly we might have a new lower low to be printed. Okay, possibly. So here's JPY on four hours prices giving us a sell. There's no reason to buy on UJ yet. Okay. So if you are selling on price is currently acting here, let's go to lower time frame, like the 15 minute chart, and see if we can get in on the sell. If we go to 15 minutes, what do we have? On 15 minutes. Okay. So we have structural as so there's so the move has already started happening anyways, but this is a supply zone that price has currently retraced into that will possibly move price here, possibly. So I think we are quite late on UJ right now, but let's go to the one minute chart and see a possible scenario over here. So for people that trade one minute chart, so at the, at the retracement, what do we have? I can see a, an M pattern here. Price has taken it out liquidity here and another pattern forming like so here so what should you wait for this is for people that like to scalp on the one minute so what you can wait for in one minute is very very simple if you're a one minute trader you can wait for retracement here i see thing present i come to the extreme so for women in traders, what you can do is to set a sell limit over here. So give your stop loss run, let's say six pips stop loss. And then you can do one to four or target this extreme low. Okay, that's on UJ. That's on UJ, All right? Any other pair, guys? Any other pair? Let's take our possible last pair for tonight. And if there's, if there's another question, you can let me know. And then you ask your question. Any other pair for tonight? Okay, I can see a pair that we've not done. USD card. USD card, what's going on USD card? Let's go to the weekly chart. Oh, Mr. Ambrose, we've done gold though. We've done gold. Okay. So, USD card is majorly bullish. As you can see, structure, so I'll skip this. If I just doing this, all right? And ultimately, this demand zone, this demand range here is active, all right? So I still think that price is going to come down to take out this liquidity here on the weekly chart. Okay. So because that move always happens at supply and demand zones. All right. 
and then we we are we also have a possible reason to 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 look for sales because last time that this demand zone reactor was here and the price did not actually create a higher high so possibly that means this high is protected or has some vested interest there so possibly you know we should see price go all the way down right so if we know that let's go to lower time frame like four hours and look for possible scenarios so ultimately we are looking for price to take out this buy side liquidity here okay to form a low and the structure on four hours is what is bearish on four hours okay as, as you can see price going from here but let me just draw the recent one here you can see this move impulse correction impulse okay market is bearish on four hours what's the easiest thing to trade on this guy is to wait for price to retrace into here or if you if you want to take the old range, like I'm considering, you want to take the old range. So when price retraces into the space, you look for sell sell uh, people to want to sell first. So you will not enter. You wait for liquidity to be taken out. Wait for price to take out liquidity. Once that happens, then you start looking for sell opportunities. Okay, and then you sell into that demand. Into this demand here to uh, take out that loan. Okay, so that's what we have on USD card. So if and when price retraces into this range of supply here, first things first, before you sell, you want to spot liquidation. When you spot it, after liquidation, you can now start looking for sell opportunities. And this is irrespective of your entry strategy, okay? It should give you a good entry and good strike rates. Okay? Is that clear, guys? Let me know if you are getting value from this session. If you are getting value, please type in yes, in the chat box. Let me know if I'm carrying you along. Awesome, Solomon. Okay. Awesome. So, any question? Let's take our possible last question for tonight, if any. And then, if not, we'll just call it a night. And then, when we come back on Wednesday, the market would have um, given us good direction that we can trade. Because it's Monday, we don't really know what's going on yet. So by Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, we should know what's going on. Okay. Any more questions for the night? Mr. Musa is asking, any suggestion on setting on trading view? It's free to use um, trading view, right? Just go to tradingview.com. www.tradingview. All right, I it's free to use it. They also have paid versions that give you access to extra features. I'm always on the paid version because I need those features. Uh, so I recommend it. I recommend it. I think it's still it's still, it's still available, All right? So the paid version is, is just fifteen dollars every month, which is less than less than 10k a month so consider that your business cost okay because trading is business or your career costs for you know most people that have that have jobs you spend maybe a third of your salary on on uh, tfa going to work but with forex your tfa can just be 15 dollars and then you can make a lot more okay it's still free, Mr. Solomon, don't worry. It's free. They have free, and then they also have a free trial of all of their plants for 30 days. 
internet color that is basic for everybody now <laughs> that is basic and then most of you will still watch instagram or tiktok more than trading view anyways so you so you're not spending so much on internet with forest trading <clears throat> okay any more questions i wait for the next 10 seconds Don't worry, you can always reach me on these live sessions. Um, or if you need any support, you can just reach out to your account officer. You have your account officer to get support. And if you go to the website, we have a live chat option on our website, Tend or Trade, uh, for support, if any. All right. All right, guys. So let's go tonight. Thank you so much for being a part of this live session. The recording will be made available tonight or tomorrow to be on our YouTube channel. I recommend that you take time and go through the recorded sessions and do well to mark up the analysis on your chat as well so that um, you don't miss this setup. So, Mr. Manuel, by tomorrow, it should be up on on the youtube channel okay so the link will be sent inside the whatsapp group okay and also telegram as well okay all right guys so i wish everybody the best this trading week uh may the market be on our side plenty tips plenty money to everybody this week all right guys good night everybody i'll see you on wednesday take care